Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, XTI aircraft order book grows. MGL rolls out a new line of instruments for sport aircraft. Arkansas Pilot may be in hot water over Turkey Drop. Hello, I'm Laura Hudson. It's October 25th and this is Airborne Unlimited. XTI Aircraft says it has received several additional orders and deposits from customers under its pre-sales program, launched at NBAA. The company stated that the response at the show was very positive and generated additional financial and strategic relationships for the company. The six-seat TriFan 600 will have the speed, range, and comfort of a luxury business aircraft and the ability to take off and land vertically like a helicopter. It will travel at 345 miles an hour with a range of up to 1,200 miles. Using three ducted fans, the tri-fan lifts off vertically, its two wing fans then rotate forward for a seamless transition to cruise speed in its initial climb. It will reportedly reach 30,000 feet in just 10 minutes. On June 19th at this year's Paris Air Show, XTI announced its first orders for the TriFan 600 under the company's pre-sales program. Previously, XTI launched a formal stock offering in 2016 under SEC Regulation A+, which is open to all unaccredited and accredited investors around the globe. Simultaneously with the equity crowdfunding financing, accredited investors may participate in XTI's $20 million Series B round. After the break, SpaceX to launch Zuma later this year. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Based on the popular Sling 2 LSA, the Sling 4 was designed to be the most practical and desirable lightweight four-place experimental aircraft on the market. Find out more about this 115 horsepower turbocharged airplane at airplanefactory.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. SpaceX has a mission on its schedule for launch as early as November 10th of this year that has space launch watchers scratching their heads. Codenamed Project Zuma on the launch schedule, there is a public claim of ownership of the payload by either a private or government entity. So what will actually be aboard the rocket is a mystery. It will launch as early as November 10th atop a Falcon 9 booster from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center. A B-330 expandable space habitat module will be launched aboard a ULA Vulcan launch vehicle and placed in low lunar orbit by the end of 2020, according to Bigelow Aerospace. The B-330 would launch to low Earth orbit on a Vulcan 562 configuration rocket. Once the B-330 is in orbit, Bigelow Aerospace will outfit the habitat and demonstrate it is working properly. Once the B-330 is fully operational, ULA's industry-unique distributed lift capability would be used to send the B-330 to lunar orbit. This month marks the 90th anniversary of Grand Canyon Scenic Airlines, the world's longest-running aerial tour company. The story of Grand Canyon Scenic Airlines began in 1927. That year, Parker Van Zandt left his position at Ford Motor Company to pursue his dream of flying passengers from one rim of the Grand Canyon to the other. The company's first commercial air tour took place on October 3, 1927, 
in a six-passenger Stinson Detroiter SM1. Lockheed Martin's LM-100J commercial freighter program recently marked yet another successful achievement with the first flight of the second production LM-100J aircraft October 11th. The LM-100J is the 17th different mission capability developed for the C-130J Super Hercules, and it is an updated version of the L-100 cargo aircraft, which Lockheed Martin produced from 1964 to 1992. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. MGL Avionics has announced the Vega series of two and one quarter inch singles for experimental and light sport aircraft. The Vega range consists of 12 two and one quarter inch color display aviation instruments using a high resolution backlit color graphics display. These instruments provide excellent daylight readability, even in direct sunlight. Each instrument includes a rotary control plus two independent keys for easy menu navigation and to access specific instrument features. The Vega range has a wide supply voltage range of 8 to 30 VDC with built-in reverse and over voltage protection. All Vega instruments that have engine monitoring functions have the ability to interface to an MGL avionics RDAC unit. The full range consists of AHARS units, altimeters with VSIs, airspeed indicators, temperature monitors, fuel computers, RPM indicators, and manifold pressure indicators. Each instrument has multiple display and customization options. After these messages, Arkansas Pilot may be in hot water over Turkey Drop. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics Personal Jet Kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit Plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. We're not sure if this is life imitating art or art imitating life, but this will strike a chord with anyone who watched the 1978 Thanksgiving episode of WKRP in Cincinnati. At the annual Yaleville Turkey Trot held in northern Arkansas recently, a low-flying plane dropped four turkeys over festival goers, who chased down the birds. But nearly everybody seems to know that there is something inherently wrong with the practice, which has reportedly been going on for five decades. The FAA is reportedly looking into whether any laws were broken by the pilot, though media reports suggest that the FAA has not intervened in the past because the birds are not considered projectiles. A local animal rights activist has filed a complaint with the sheriff, saying criminal charges should be filed against the pilot for animal cruelty and animal abandonment. Organizers of the festival did not respond to a request for comment. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed Monday, Wednesday, and Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. See you Friday.